on guys good to see you again so I've been working on the CR250 and as a lot of you saw in the last video I had some issues with getting it to have spark so I asked for your advice down in the comment section and I got a lot of good responses a lot of you said it could have been the kill switch could have been the grease I put inside the connections could have been the spark plug wire there's really a lot of possibilities here so let's break it down and really figure out what's going on with this thing. So the easiest thing to check out and the first thing I'll look at in a no spark situation is the kill switch. So the kill switch plugs in right here. This is an open type kill switch, meaning when it's plugged in and the button is not pressed down, it's an open circuit, meaning there's no connection being made. And then when you push the button down, that creates the connection and kills the motor. So leaving the kill switch or having the kill switch plugged in and free is essentially the same thing as just leaving the wires hanging right here. So having the kill switch on there is really only going to complicate matters in the event of this kill switch being faulty. So I'm just going to leave the kill switch off. And the next thing I would look at is all the connections. Make sure they are secure and all the wires leading into them are solid. So that one looks good. Got one up here. Just kind of tug on the wires a little bit. Nothing too crazy. Make sure that connection snapped in. Just kind of give everything a nice little check over here. That looks good. And then we can look at the grounds on the harness here. So every bike or every harness is going to have a ground. On this bike, it's on the coil mount right here. And I've had this thing off a few times, wire brushed it, made sure it's good to go. So that's definitely not the issue. Another thing we could look at here is the spark plug wire. So this one is a little bit kinked. I was a little bit worried about that in the last video. And a lot of you mentioned that could be the issue as far as the no spark goes. So I'm gonna pull the cap off here. Kind of look at the uh, coil or the wire where it goes into the coil. Make sure that that's solid not coming out of there. And then another common issue is the spark plug cap not making contact with the wire inside. So I'm gonna pull the cap off and take a look at that. So this cap just twists off of the wire and we should see some exposed wire inside. So to me it looks like there's a good amount of wire coming out and making contact with the cap. So I'm gonna venture to say that is not the issue. So if you pull your spark plug cap off and you don't see much wire there or it's really frayed, you can chop a little bit off the end of the wire, maybe like a quarter inch or so, and you'll expose a new strand there and that should solve an issue. But for now, I'm gonna put this cap back on. So this is a new plug, but just because crazy things happen and you never know with spark plugs, I'm gonna pull it out and swap it out for a new one. I mean, it could be an issue, so it's worth looking into. Plug looks good. I mean, it's new, but just for peace of mind, I am going to swap it out. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention when I was on the subject of the ground is all of the motor mounts have to be clean as well in order for the wiring to ground out properly. So we've got the motor mount plates that has to be clean in between the plates, the head, the frame, we've got the swing arm pivot two motor mount bolts down here. So all that has to be super clean in order for things to work. And obviously on this bike, we've got things pretty fresh, so that's probably not the issue. All right, let's see if swapping out the spark plug will make a difference here. Just gonna ground out the spark plug on the head somewhere and try to kick this thing over by hand pretty quick. Shoot, still doesn't have spark. So I am gonna have to dig into this a little further. Man, electrical issues, they're never fun to deal with. All right, I'm down here at the flywheel instator and there's a few things we can check down here. The first being the gap between the flywheel and the pulse generator. So the pulse generator here is adjustable. You just loosen up the screws and you can move it. Um, I haven't touched it, so it should still be at the factory position. You just measure the gap between the flywheel here at the tab or the raised portion and the pulse generator and that gap should be 
0.46 millimeters. Just gonna feed this feeler gauge in between there. Feels pretty good, a little bit of drag and it's not loose. So I would say that gap is good to go. And the next thing we can check out is the stator or the timing here. So the stator has slotted holes on top and down here on the bottom. So you can adjust the stator position and that will change the timing. So actually come to think of it, the timing needs to be set when the bike is running. So that isn't really possible right now. And I don't think that would really affect the spark either. So we're gonna have to move on to the next thing. The next issue I'm gonna dig into is the grease that I put inside the connections here. So I've always done that dielectric grease inside connections, did it on the 125, never had an issue with it. So it's probably not the problem, but it is a possibility, so I'm gonna check into it. I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Pull this connector apart. So inside of the connector here, we've got the terminals and I put grease on those terminals. So I'm gonna take some contact cleaner and a little acid brush and clean those up. I'm gonna squirt a little of this contact cleaner inside the connector and the acid brush should be able to get all that out of there. Hit the other side of the connector here. Just gonna let these sit for a few minutes and let that contact cleaner evaporate. Actually, just for a little peace of mind, I'm gonna blow it out with the air compressor. Oh, that was a good idea. There's actually a lot of uh, crap coming out of there. Now I'm gonna move on to the CDI box and do the same thing. Pop off the connectors and clean that grease out of there. All right, while I've got the connectors apart and drying, I'm gonna go ahead and test some of the electrical components, see if uh, they read out fine for voltage and ohms. So the components most likely to fail are the stator, the pulse generator, and the coil. So we can go ahead and test those with a multimeter here. But the one thing we cannot test is the CDI box. Whenever I'm testing electronics, I like to start right at the bottom, right at the source. So the pulse generator is up first. Looks like we've got a blue and yellow wire, green and white. Come up to the connector here. So I'm gonna put the leads into the connector and test resistance and voltage. So I'm gonna turn the multimeter to ohms here. That little symbol indicates ohms and go between blue, yellow, and green, white wire. And I should have between 180 and 280 ohms here. All right, we've got 230 ohms. So that falls between the 180 and 280 range. And now to test for voltage, switch the multimeter over to volts, and we want volts DC. So volts DC is gonna have See, it's on AC right now. That indicates AC. The straight line or solid line with dotted line underneath is DC. Once again, I'm gonna go to the same wires here. And this is gonna be kind of tough to do with one set of hands because I have to turn the motor over as well. And I should have a reading of 0.7 volts or higher. So a minimum of 0.7 volts as I turn the engine over. All right, we've got a couple readings of over five volts. So it looks like the pulse generator is good for volts and for resistance. And next up, I'm gonna test the actual stator. I'm gonna switch this thing back over to resistance or ohms and go between the white and the yellow wire. And we're gonna need to see a number between 0.5 and four ohms here. All right, we're around 1.7, 1.8, and uh, that falls within the range. So it looks like the stator is good. Next up is gonna be testing the ignition coil. And I've always found it's easier to just pull the coil off the bike since it's kind of cramped in here. All 
The first thing we're gonna test with the coil is the resistance between the terminal here and the spark plug cap. Turn this thing on. We should have between nine and 16 ohms here. All right, 10.4, that falls within the range. The next thing to test is the resistance between the ground and the terminal. And we'll need to remove the spark plug cap for this. And we're looking for 0.1 to 0.3 ohms. All right, we got 0.1 up to 0.2. So it looks like that's good to go. And then to test for voltage, the coil will need to be back on the bike. You absolutely gotta make sure that cap is screwed on securely. Now for testing the voltage on the coil, we're gonna need to have a spark plug in the spark plug cap grounded to the cylinder. And then take the leads, and the leads are gonna go to the ground on the coil and the terminal on the coil. You have to pull up that boot a little bit, get underneath there. And while holding all this in position, I'll have to turn the engine over and we're looking for 100 volts minimum. Looks like we're getting 130. All right, so coil test out good for voltage as well. So all these connectors should be dry and ready to go by now. I'm gonna put things back together and see if taking that grease out made a difference. Make sure these things snap in securely. And we should be good to go. I really hope that grease was the issue. I'm kind of doubtful, but uh, you guys know how I am. Sometimes I get a little overboard with grease and lube and who knows. All right, there's really nothing else to test. I've gone through all the components, checked everything. Everything seems to be good, so this is the moment of truth. See what happens here. So I've got a spark plug in there. Just gonna ground it on the head here and kick this thing over by hand as fast as I can. Are you kidding me? Seeing a spark. What could it have been? Was it that grease? I gotta see this again. Yeah, it does have spark. Yeah, so it must have been that grease. What I'm thinking is I must have put too much grease inside of a connection. And then once you have a lot of grease in there and you connect the connectors, it must have pushed something apart. That's really the only thing I can think of. I mean, everything tested out fine. All the connections were good. Coils fine. I thought it was the spark plug wire, but I mean, that was fine too. So the only thing I could think of was the grease. I mean, that's really the only thing I changed. I'm gonna turn the lights out and see if it's actually uh, a nice, fat, bright spark. Yeah, that's crazy. Whatever, I'll take it. So, Learn from my mistake, guys. Do not put tons of grease inside your connections. Like I said before, I did that same grease on the 125. I did on all my other builds. Never had an issue with it. So I think I just put too much in there. All right, so here's the grease I'm using. It's called dielectric grease. And it doesn't say anywhere on the tube that you're not supposed to use it on the terminals itself. But I think what I'll do from here on out is just use it around the body of the connector instead of right directly on the terminals. And uh, that should help keep water out. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So on the connector, the terminals inside, that's where I was using the grease. And instead of that, I'm gonna put it around the outside of the connector here. And that should help seal off from uh, water getting inside the connection. So like I was saying, I think I put too much grease inside of the terminals here. And then when you push the connection together, it must have separated or pushed something apart inside of there. Kind of like uh, hydro locked it in a sense. 
So I'm just going to put a little bead around the outside of the connector here. And there is a seal inside of the connection as well. So that grease combined with the seal should make a pretty tight and waterproof seal. Come up to the CDI box and do the same thing up here. Still cannot believe that happened. Anyways guys, that's gonna wrap up the video. Hope you guys learned a thing or two. I know I definitely did. So learn from my mistake. Don't put a ton of grease inside your connections or don't use any grease at all. So now we can move on to actually assembling the bike. So I want you guys to write down in the comment section below what I should work on next, what I should put on the bike next. So for you guys looking to support the channel, I do have two new hat styles over on primemx.com. We've got this curved bill with the prime cursive text on the front and a black flat bill with the logo on front. Really like how these hats turned out. So if you want to pick up a new hat, support the channel. I will have the link to the store down below in the description. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, keep it prime.